everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are doing extremely well now uh, the problem that we are going to solve today is very very special to me why because uh, the problem set of this problem is me i did set this problem when i was an intern at gfg back in 2019 for one of the hiring contest so it's very very close to me so the problem is minimum multiplications to reach the end so you're given a start end and an array of n numbers at each step start is multiplied with any given number in the array and then mod operation with uh, 10 to the power 5 is done to get the new start your task is to find the minimum steps in which end can be achieved starting from start if it is not possible to reach end then you can definitely return something as minus 1 so let's understand what does the problem state so the problem is very simple it will always give you a start it will always give you an end okay and you'll be given an array of n numbers like over here they're giving you three numbers now what you can do is you can pick up this number three and you can actually multiply with two or you can actually multiply with five or you can actually multiply with seven okay and you can probably get six if you multiply with five you'll get 15 three into seven is 21 you can do whatever you wish to as long as you are reaching the end that is what matters and the question states how many minimum multiplications you have to do in order to reach this uh, from start to the end now assume i take something like uh, start as three and i say hey listen let's multiply something as into two i'll be like okay one multiplication and i'll reach to six and after this i'll say i'll pick up five from the array and multiply with six so thereby i reach end so can i say 30 is what the end is and I've reached. How many multiplications did I do? I did one, I did two. Order of multiplications is something which I'm not concerned of. What I'm concerned of is counting the number of multiplication, which is one here, two here. So in minimum, I have to do two multiplications in order to reach 30. Okay, now you might be thinking, then what is this mod all about? Because they said, whatever you get, you have to do a mod of it, right? Now you know something, if you have 6 and you do 6 mod 10 to the power 5, it's still going to be 6. On, uh, mod will only be applicable if your number is greater than 10 to the power 5. Okay, that is the case. Now let's uh, see the second example so that you can understand. So we are given uh, something like 7. Okay, now what they have done is, at first they multiplied 7 into 3, which gives them 21. Now they've taken 21 and multiplied with 3 which gives them 63. Now what they have done is they've taken 63 and they multiplied with 65. Remember one thing, you can multiply three or whichever number as many times as you want. There is no restriction on that. So now I'm taking 65 and I'm multiplying 63 into 65 to get something as 4095, which is still lesser than the uh, value of this particular mod. But Next case is 4095 I take and I multiply that with again 65. This time what I get is something like 266175. Okay, now this number has exceeded the mod. So if you apply a modular, uh, modular operation to this, which will be something like 266175 modulo 10 to the power 5, then the number that you will get is nothing but 66175. And you will realize that that is the end. And you'll realize that that is the end. So remember, at any time, you're just doing a multiplication, doing a multiplication, doing a multiplication. And you get a number which exceeds 10 to the power 5. Then you got to do a modulo with this number so that you again get back into the range of 0 to 10 to the power 5 minus 1. I want you to be always in this range. And I want you to do the operations in this range only. So whenever you exceed, multiply and come back. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, okay, this is where I got the answer. That's fine. How many multiplications did we do? One, two, three, and four. So I can say at a minimum of, I did four multiplications and that is going to be my answer. What if this was not the answer? What if this was not the answer? Then you'd have taken six, six, one, seven, five, and probably tried it, multiplied with three or four or whatever you wish to. Uh, main goal is to start from the start and end at the end and I need the minimum steps in order to reach the end. That is what the question states.
Now the question arises, what is the thought process behind solving this problem? So assume this is the start and I'm not taking any end as of now. And we know that this, uh, these are the numbers which you can multiply with the any given state. So assume the initial state is uh, three. Okay, so let's write the initial state as three. Now, what can you do with three? Like logically, according to the problem, what can you do? Can you say you can multiply with two? You can multiply with five. You can multiply with seven. Can I say this? So if I multiply with two, I'll get to six, isn't it? And can I say this? If this took uh, zero steps, because at three, that was zero multiplications. This will be one multiplications. Can I say that? Yes. Or I can be like, I can multiply five, which will be 15 comma one multiplication. Or I can say I can multiply seven, which will be 21 comma one multiplication. Can I say this? I can. Now, over here at six, what can you do? I'll again say I can do the similar thing. And I can be like, I can multiply six with two, five, seven. Go ahead and do it. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I'll multiply with two to get 12. This time I'll take two multiplications, one more multiplication done. I can say I'll multiply with five to get 30 comma two multiplications, right? I can say I'll multiply with seven to get 42 comma two multiplications. Can I say I can? Now, what will be the next step? I have 15. What can I do with 15? Multiply with two, multiply with five, multiply with seven, right? So I can go ahead and multiply with two to get 30 comma two operation, right? And I can go ahead and say, I'll multiply with five to get something like 75 comma two. And I can say, I'll multiply with seven to probably get uh, 75, 90, 105 comma two multiplications. Similarly, I can take 21 and do with two, with five, with seven. Now, something to observe over here. This is the first starting point. And then we are reaching different, different numbers. First, we reached six, then we reached 15, then we reached 21, right? Then we reached 12, then we reached 30, then we reached 42, then we reached 30. Again, something to observe. I just mark it as of now. And then we reached 75, 105, and probably a lot of other numbers on two multiplications. Similarly, if I go again down and I multiply with two, probably I'll reach 24 with three operations. I'll again multiply with five. I'll reach 60 with three operations. I'll again multiply with seven. I'll probably reach 84 uh, with three operations. Similarly, for 30, I'll multiply with two and I'll again reach 60. And similarly, I can go and go ahead. And my question is, if over here, I have a 30, over here, I have a 30, which 30 will I multiply? If I just go via this path, will that suffice? It will. Now, which algorithm this, this looks like? Yes, something like a Dijkstra's algorithm, where you start with zero steps and you keep multiplying and you keep multiplying and you keep on going. And whenever you reach your end, assume, just in case, assume the end was given as 75, assume. So you would have got 75 over here. So the answer would have been two, uh, multiplication equal to two steps. Can I say that? Assume you would have something like end as 84, then you'd have got 84 here, over here, right? And that would have been steps equal to three. So can I say I can do a simple Dijkstra's algorithm and this problem will be solved, isn't it? But over here, what is the main concern? What are the type of nodes? How many nodes are there? Can I say if this is the starting node, can I call this as a source? I can. Can I call this as a distance? I can. I can definitely call this as a source and I can call this as a distance. Can I say six is a node, 15 is a node, 21 is a node, 12 is a node, 30 is a node. Everyone can be treated as a node. Can I say the nodes will be from zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 till this. Can I say this? Why? Because they're always saying us, if it exceeds 10 to the power of five, you have to do a module of it. So modulo of 10 to the power uh, five is only going to work. Let me quickly check if it is 10 to the power five. Yeah, it is 10 to the power five. So modulo of 10 to the power five is only going to work if your number exceeds. Because if you do four modulo uh, 10 to the power five, it's going to be four. If you do 
something like triple nine, sorry, uh, four nines modulo this, it's still going to be triple nine. But the moment you take something like this, this is a number and you do modulo of this, this will become zero. If you take one, this will become one. If you take two, this will become two. If you take three, this will become three. If you take two, one, three, this will become two, one, three. So the modulo will only work for numbers which are greater than four nines. Can I say that? I can. So can I say, if I'm doing a modulo, all my notes, all my these guys, all my these guys are definitely bound to lie between zero and four nines. Every one of them. So can I say my nodes or my typical points can be from 0 to 999, isn't it, right? So thereby, this is what our nodes are. We have a source node. So if we have everything, what are we going to do at every step? What are we doing? We're taking 3, multiplying with 2, multiplying with 5, multiplying with 7. That's it. And then you compare the distance. If you're getting 6, just compare the distance. So in order to apply Dijkstra's algorithm, this is how the initial configuration looks. We have a minimum heap, which is going to store steps and the number. We have an array, which you know, all the nodes are there, 0, 1, 2, 3, till 4, 9s, and everyone is marked as infinity. So we have the source or the starting point as 3. The steps, 0, starting point 3, and at 3, the steps is 0. Now, the array is nothing but, let's quickly write the array as uh, 2, 5, 7, right? So, array is 2, 5, and 7. So, what you'll do is, very simple, you'll take out this and you'll say, hey, listen, this is my first guy. So, I'm taking steps 0 to the node 3. Now, I can multiply this with 2 and I'll get 6 with step 1. So, 6 is definitely, uh, would be infinity. So, you can update it with step 1 and 6, right? Similarly, you can multiply with 5, you'll get something like 15 comma step one. So one comma 15 goes again and probably at 15, again, there'll be an infinity. You can update that with one and you can multiply with seven. You'll get 21 comma one. So one comma 21 and probably at 21, you can, instead of infinity, you can do a one, right? And I can say this is done. Very simple, very straightforward, simple dextro. Next, get the next guy, one comma six, right? So step one in order to reach six, again, do the same thing. Multiply with 2, 12 comma 1 steps. So 1 comma 12, probably at 12 somewhere you can mark it as 1. And then you can multiply 5, you will get 30 comma 1. So 1 comma 30 you got, right? And uh, what you can say is, you've got 1 comma 30. So at, probably at 30 you can just update it. And similarly you can do a multiply with 7, 42 comma 1, 1 comma 42. And you can again update 42 as well. Similarly, you can go ahead with the next guy. Who's the next guy? 1 comma 15. Now, this is a point where you should understand one uh, very small thing. When you do 15 multiplied with 2, it gives you 30 with 1 steps. So if you remember, 30 has already been reached with 1 step. If someone has reached 30 with 1 step, let him go with that flow because at every flow, we are multiplying 2, 5, 7. Again, taking a 30, again, multiplying 2, again, multiplying 5, again, multiplying 7 is an excessive task. So I'll just see, you're not a better solution. You are still reaching in one step. I know any 30 at the future will reach in one step only. So why will I take you? I will not take you. Okay. So this is how you can go ahead, go ahead doing it. And you'll ultimately reach your uh, 75 somewhere. Whenever you reach your end, those number of steps will be your answer. This is the simple diagram you have to apply. The only catch over here is if you Think about the mod, you have to figure out what are the node numbers. You have to figure out that the node numbers will be from 0 to 4 nines. That is the catch. Once you figure out that the node numbers are in this order from 0 to 4 nines, I think the problem is pretty much solved. So I hope I was able to explain you now a quick thing. You know the steps are increasing by plus one or the multiplication is increasing by plus one. So the queue will automatically store everything in increasing order. So we do not need a priority queue. A simple queue will do. We have already done that in previous problems. A simple queue will do. So no need to take a priority queue. So what I'll do is uh, I will now code it up. I hope you have understood the entire explanation. So I'll code up the C++ solution on the right and you can figure out the exact similar Java code on the left. So we're given uh, array start and the end. So we will take a queue and we will take a pair. 
okay and initially in the queue what you can do is you can say hey listen i can probably say start comma zero right and i can probably take a vector and mark it as distance and whatever is this i'll just take it and mark it with infinite or one e9 okay and please please make sure whatever is your start mark it as zero and now let's iterate in the queue very very simple like it's a very standard problem and go ahead and say auto or you can say int uh, node is equal to q dot front dot first and you can say the steps as of now is q dot front dot second once you have done this what's the next step take it out of the queue now you need to multiply with all the numbers so you can probably iterate in the list go and iterate in the list what will be the number can i say the number will be very simple uh, whatever is it multiplied with your node modulo just you can do a modulo because it will give you the value lesser than uh, 10 to the power 5 it's if it exceeds that now what you need to check is if steps plus one is lesser than the distance of this particular number if that's the case you can say distance can you please store steps plus one simple die extra once you have done this you can say hey q i got someone num with steps plus one but what if uh, somehow you reach the guy yes somehow this number is the end if that's the end you can actually return steps plus one simple and if you do not reach the answer you can go ahead and return minus one and that should be it so you're doing a mod uh, we forgot to declare the mod so mod you know will be this let's declare this and once you have done this i'll just quickly compile this and see if it is working fine it is let's quickly submit this and see if it is giving us correct answers yes it is giving us correct answers what is the time complexity of this particular approach like let's look at it normally so normally we are saying a node and we know at the worst case the number of nodes that we will generate is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 till 4 nines which is these many nodes can i say these many nodes yes these many nodes are the nodes that i'll generate at the worst case right and then i'm multiplying them with all the array numbers individually so that's n but my question is can you generate all the numbers like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 accurately just think about that. because if you look over here they're giving that the array will be somewhere of size 10 to the power 4 so can you generate all the 10 to the power 5 numbers I think mathematically it's it's gonna be very very hypothetical scenario where you get an array you get this particular array and you're able to generate zero one two three four five six till four nines all the numbers hypothetical generation is impossible so mathematically also i don't think it's possible so because you just have to the power four numbers so all the numbers generation is not possible so this is a very hypothetical scenario where this code might go up to this but it's pretty uh, lesser than this again we cannot predict the exact time complexity why because it will depend on the array whatever array is given those many numbers you will generate so it completely depends on the array but in an interview you can say hypothetically this is this it's not possible it's way lesser than that about the space we're using a distance array we're using a q data structure so yeah you can just count them into the space complexity so i hope i was able to explain you this particular problem and you understood the entire code so just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button right away and yes if you have not checked out our dp series and the sg sheet the links will be in the description and yeah with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care Okay.